So section 6.2, example 5. So we're going to add one new definition in terms of variables. When we have z with a subscript of alpha, um, this would be where area um, alpha is to the right. So when we have this one, z subscript O5, it means in example 5, it means O5 is the area to the right. It's always the right side. So again, I'm not labeling the number line because the z-score is unknown. I'm labeling the area. So if we want to find z-score, if we have area and we want z-score, that's the inverse function. So we're going to say z is equal to inverse norm. And then we need to figure out the area to the left, because that's just the way the calculator is programmed. So if we have 0 0.05 on the right, then there's 0.95 left over, because that would be 1 minus 0.05. So we'll do inverse norm of 0.95. So second distribution, inverse norm, 0.95, and we get a z-score of 1.645. I'm going to always do three decimal places for z. It's just the standard. All right, let's try another one. So the next example, example six, we have z subscript. But when it's lower, we call it a subscript, 0.75, so 75% to the right. So I'm going to shade more than half. So 0 would be 50. So it's going to be farther. So I'll just approximate where 75 is. So z is unknown. And the area to the right is 0.75. So the area to the left would be 0.25, 1 minus 0.75. And so then when we do inverse norm, we just use the left side. So we will do z is equal to inverse norm of 0.25 for the left. It's always the left. So second distribution, inverse norm, 0.25, and we get a z-score of negative 0.674. And that makes sense because zero again is in the middle, so this side is negative and this side is positive. So that makes sense with the area. Um, something that's going to be really common in later chapters is doing two Z values in between. So example seven, we're going to find two Z values that divide the curve, the area under the curve, so that the middle area is 0.95. And this will be really significant later because what we'll try to do is get rid of the tails. Because um, the tails are usually like outliers. So we have 0.95 in the middle and then the equal area outside. So these are the same. So we have 95, which means we have 0.05 left over. And then since equal outside areas, we're going to go ahead and divide that by 2. So each tail gets about 0.025. So the whole curve should add up to 1. And it's going to be close to 2. If we remember, 95% was um, around two standard deviations, but it's not exactly 2 because that was an approximation. Um, so let's do, we'll call them Z1 and Z2. Let's do Z1 first because it's a little easier. Normal CD, oops, inverse norm because we're going backwards. We know area. Um, and so area to the left for Z1 would just be the 0 0.025. So we'll do that in a second. Um, Z2, inverse norm. This one's a little trickier. What's the area to the left? The area to the left is actually a combination of both of these. Because it has the 025 and the 95 to the left. Because the 95 doesn't go all the way. So when I combine those, I get 975. Because 95 stops here, so we have to add the 025 as well. All right, let's type these both on the calculator. Inverse norm of 0.025, and we get negative 1.960. That's going to round up to 960. Um, pretty close to 2, but not quite. Let's try the other one. Inverse norm of 0.975, that's the area on the left, and we get 1.960. And we're actually getting the same but opposite because of symmetry.
So we'll see that a lot a little bit later. All right, should we try one more example? Yeah, let's do one more. So example eight. Um, so Z has the standard normal distribution. So anytime I see that, I immediately think of this normal curve with zero in the middle. One, two, three, one, two, three. So we wanna, I just, we're doing the same thing we've been doing, I just have it in a new notation. So we wanna find the probability P of Z greater than 1.905, which means we want the area, because equals probability. So we want the area um, greater than, where Z is greater than 1.904. So one, two, it'll be around there. 1.904. And so since we have the Z score and we want area, we're going to use normal CDF. Because we're doing the original direction now. So we're going to say normal CDF. Anytime we want area, we use normal CDF. Um, lower is 1.904, upper is infinity because we keep going, so 10 to the 99, and that'll tell me area under the curve. Ten to the ninety nine. And we should get point oh two eight five using normal CDF on the calculator, right? Lower is one point nine zero four, comma upper ten to the ninety nine. So the area under the curve or the probability, this could be interpreted as area or probability is point oh two eight five. All right, let's try one more. Again, it's the standard normal curve. So I'm going to draw that right away. So we put zero in the middle. And this says P of Z greater than K. So that makes me think I'm shading to the right for greater. Equals 0 0.20, which means 0 0.20 is area because it's probability. So it basically says area to the right. And the reason I say to the right is the greater than symbol is 0 0.20. So I don't know where that is. I have no idea what z square that'll be. So I'll just estimate. But the area is 0 0.20. Anytime we have area and we want z score, we use inverse. So I'm going to go ahead and star these, right? Star z squared area is normal CDF. Area to z-score is inverse norm. So we'll go ahead and use inverse norm. We need area to the left, unfortunately, and we have area to the right. So area to the left would be 0 0.80, 1 minus 0 0.20. Hopefully we're finding that a little faster now. And so 0 0.80. And so we're actually saying, we're calling that k, not z, but it's k is a z-score. And we'll do inverse norm of 0 0.80. So second distribution, inverse norm. You have to do 0 0.80, right? It's always the left side. So draw the curve. Don't just immediately plug in numbers. And we get a z-score of 0 0.842. And so those are the calculator functions. This section is all about practicing just using the functions. And then in the next section, we'll look at applications that use these functions. So get a lot of practice with the calculator this section.